Hi, Tanner. Uh, just two topics, actually. Um, the first being, Aaron Boone said that you were kind of uh, the health and safety guy that they appointed for the staff. Just curious what that is, what that entails and, and, and what you've had to do. The health and safety? Yeah, guy? he that said kind of you were going to be taking some of the lead on the protocols or? I would imagine that probably uh, would include just trying to help, you know, hold the, you know, our staff and players accountable in the dugout primarily. Um, but I think as, as a whole, our, our entire staff is um, doing a good job of kind of assuming that responsibility collectively, um, doing what we can to, you know, model the, the protocols in place and, and then also, you know, remind players and staff as needed to, to do the best we can. This is, you know, new for everybody. So, um, yeah, I think we're all just trying to do our part. And you were trying to incorporate a new stance with Gary Sanchez and the other catchers, you know, in spring training. How did you keep that going during the quarantine? And, and how do you think they are doing now that they're back? Um, I think it's it's gone really well. Um, you know, I, I leaned on, you know, Marlon a lot, um, specifically, you know, when, when communicating with Gary. So we, we stayed in communication um, weekly and, and, you know, he has a training facility back home that, that he utilizes. Um, so he would send me video and, um, you know, and I'd provide feedback and, and, you know, occasionally we'd jump on a Zoom call together and, and discuss, some, you know, certain variations of, of some of the positions and moves he was working through. So. I think overall it was it was uh, the downtime was was really positive because um, I think it allowed Gary specifically to kind of explore some of the, the positions um, and, and figure out how he could adapt them, you know, to his own style. So there was kind of an exploratory period and we got to take advantage of, you know, some extra time. And, um, you know, ultimately it was I, th I think we'll we'll pay off. Thank you. Take the next questions from Meredith Morakovitz. Meredith. Hi, Tanner. How do you expect those adjustments to help Gary Sanchez behind the plate? Um, you know, the main lens has been, you know, trying to, you know, maintain the improvements that we've seen um, or that we at least saw last year in 2019 from a blocking standpoint while continuing to, to grow um, the capacity or his skill set, I should say, um, as a pitch framer. So um, all of the, the new positioning and, and setups is, is kind of geared towards, you know, getting him in a position that um, he can be in a better position to receive the baseball. And I think that it just happens more frequently than anything else. So, you know, as we've kind of merged, I talked about this, you know, last week where we've kind of merged um, his – "Quote unquote ready or, or secondary stance that most catchers employ with runners on base, we've kind of merged that to more closely resemble you know positions catchers get in with nobody on base. So rather than have you know two very distinct stances, you know the goal has been to merge them together so you know we can learn how to block and receive and throw you know from from one position and then from there you know create some some different um, some some varieties out of the, that kind of base position. So uh, I, I would expect in, in, in even, you know, in a short sample spring training 1.0 and what we've been able to measure so far um, here in New York, you know, the receiving metrics continue to grow and, and, and he's also blocking at a, at a very consistent rate too. So, so far it's, you know, it's been really positive. Catchers and pitchers typically talk a lot, especially with starting pitchers day of a start. Have you had to change the way the communication works because of some of the distancing uh, things that are supposed to be happening? And also, our mound visits, I know we saw one yesterday. Are they allowed, frowned upon? What has been the rhetoric with that? Um, from, from a meeting standpoint, um, you know, we haven't necessarily employed, you know, the Zoom platform or, or, or other, um, you know, tools to, to communicate. We're, we're still doing it somewhat traditionally, but we're just being more conscious of the spacing. You know, we have large conference rooms. So, you know, when we sit down together as a, as a small group, um, you know, just making sure we're maintaining our space and, and wearing masks and, and respecting, you know, our teammates and, and fellow coaches and staff. So, um, you know, nothing's really changed in that regard other than just maybe a heightened awareness, you know, around, you know, doing what we can to, to protect each other. 
And as far as mound visits, I know we saw Gary Sanchez go out there the other day, I believe. Um, yeah, this a lot of this is uncharted territory. So, um, you know, I think that level of communication is um, really important, you know, at certain times to be able to to get out there and, and communicate pitcher to catcher and, and, and making sure that we're on the same page from a, from a sign standpoint, maybe an adjustment that we need to make, um, you know, adjusting a game plan to attack a certain hitter. Um, there's, I, I really don't see many alternatives to, you know, eliminating mound visits. Now, we, we do have a system in place where we can communicate from the plate um, to, to communicate pitcher to catcher in terms of what sign system we are going to use. So we will limit mound visits in, in that regard, but that's, that's not new. We've done that in the past. Um, so, but, you know, that in-game, you know, communication, I think, is, is, is really hard to, to replace with, with something else. So, I, you know, you saw Higgy yesterday was wearing a face mask. I think that's probably, um, you know, the only way that, that we can safely, um, you know, continue to have those, those mound visits. Um, but I, I think they're necessary. So I think we just are doing our best to, if, if they do need to happen, you know, trying to maintain some – type of distance out there on the mound, I think, is, is probably um, a, a common ground. Thank you. Take the next question from Marley Rivera. Marley. Hey, Tanner. Thank you so much. Um, Tanner, when you look at what Gary, when you looked at it from afar, obviously being with the Yankees now, but when he started his first full season in 16 and handling um, this big stage in New York and failing and succeeding in the big stage, what do you think his makeup is uh, to deal with this kind of stuff? I think it says a lot. Um, you know, one thing that's maybe not talked about en enough is that, you know, this is one of the hardest pitching staffs to catch probably in, in all of professional baseball when you look at just the quality of arms that we have, you know, throughout. Um, you know, so for a guy like him with to, to step into a starting role, you know, at a young age and, and, and especially in, in this market and at this stage or on this stage in New York, it, I think it says something about um, – you know, his ability to stay pretty grounded and pretty neutral um, and, and doesn't get overly excited and, and doesn't get overly low. So and I think that's important to, to perform at a consistent level. Um, you know, you need to be somewhat level headed. And, and I think he has that trait, um, you know, and, and the, the biggest thing we, I think with Gary specifically is just how that I've been most impressed by was just is his ability to experiment with some, you know, some new um, a, a new catching style um, in, you know, on the biggest stage, you know, in our game, really. And, and I think that speaks to his desire to grow and get better and, and his ability to be a little bit vulnerable. Um, so I've been really pleased and, and impressed with just the willingness um, to, you know, implement some of the things we've asked him to do. Thank you. George King, you have the next question. Tanner, what's your impressions of uh, Kyle in the short period you've been with him? It's it's been it's been equally great. I, I'm um, I re I've really enjoyed you know getting to work with Kyle and and although they're catching differently, um, I think we've we've been able to um, I think gain some ground with with some of uh, I mean he's he's already been an elite receiver and is and um, has has a really high ceiling in that regard and you know but like every player there's there's small things I think as as the general awareness of pitch framing continues to grow um, and, and teams more and more teams and organizations begin to value it um, I think the margins get smaller and smaller and, and in, in, in that regard the details become really really important so with Kyle specifically although on the surface we haven't made um, big drastic um, adjustments to say his stance like we have Gary um, but but there are similarities in terms of what they're trying to accomplish, and and, and for for Higgy um, and Gary, really, it's it's learning how to block and throw from their best receiving position. So for Gary, you've you've seen that's some variation of a knee down stance. For Kyle, um, you know, being a, a a smaller, more mobile, flexible guy, you know, he's able to sit in that really low crouch, um, but he stay he's staying in that position, you know, with runners on base, and and he's you know proving that he can continue to block and throw at a at a um, a proficient level from that position. So that's been an adjustment that he's made that's um, been a little bit behind the scenes or behind the curtain, um, but I think will also pay dividends. So I've been impressed with Higgy. I think, you know, he's going to be a valuable piece to this thing. Um, and, and so far it's been positive. 
Brendan Cuddy, go ahead. Tanner, thank you for taking the time. You mentioned how wearing a face mask the way Higgy did yesterday might be the best way to handle mound visits going forward. Do you think Gary should do the same and wear a mask? Um, you know, I think each individual player has, has the right to kind of um, decide their own comfort levels. And, um, you know, you know, for Higgy, just in, in my brief conversation with him, he felt like it was um, in his best interest, just being really close to, you know, not only pit the pitcher, um, but, but more specifically the hitter, the umpire. Um, so just kind of being in, in the thick of it, you know, his comfort level is leaning towards him wearing one. Um, you know, Gary hasn't gotten to that point and, and may not, and that's, I think that's within his right um, to do so. So I think every player is, is handling a little bit differently, um, and I think we should all respect that. I, I certainly haven't told him he should or shouldn't. Um, I've kind of reserved my, my opinion um, and given him the freedom to kind of make that decision on his own. Thank you. Take a final question from Sweeney Murdy. Sweeney. Hey, Tanner, can you be a little more liberal with Gary and his workload considering you're not trying to preserve him for 162 mm -hmm. and uh, maintain his power at the plate? Sure. I, you know, I think that's, that's always something we're trying to balance, um, you know, and, and that's a really tough, I think, equation to, to really figure out in terms of what's enough work, especially when you're learning a new style. Um, and what is too much. So, you know, I do think the style in general lends itself to a little bit less stress. Um, and, and the early feedback we've gotten from Gary is that, you know, he's recovering very well from, from some of these extended outings. Um, it, you know, he's self-described, you know, better than usual in terms of how he's, uh, you know, how he's used to feeling, you know, after catching six, seven innings. So, um, I, I think that early feedback has been positive and it's, you know, we definitely take that into consideration when we plan the next day and, and uh, you know, his workload moving forward. But it's a, it's a balancing act that, you know, we're, we're trying to do our best to communicate, um, you know, as best as possible with our strength staff and our training staff and our, our coaching staff and, and Mendy in terms of, you know, how many innings are, are appropriate, you know, following a, an extended outing. So, um, it's it's ongoing conversation that, but we're trying to be really mindful about uh, putting him in a position to to be at full strength as often as possible and, and do what he does and and uh, you know hopefully not have any diminished returns of you know what we um, expect him to, to to be offensively too. That's a that's a big piece of his game and and uh, we definitely don't want to take anything away um, you know from the the offensive capacity based on you know overworking him on the defensive end.